from all of us at Unity of San Antonio, welcome to the Unity of San Antonio Sunday Experience with Reverend Jimmy Scott. Unity is a positive path for spiritual living. We offer spiritual teachings that provide practical tools for meaningful and abundant living. We are inclusive and open-minded. Our philosophy is more spiritual than religious and is based in love. We honor all paths to God and we believe in making a positive difference in the world around us. As divine love, we envision a spiritually transformed, peaceful world. We dance in the truth of who we are through meditation, study, and service. Go to our website, unityofsa.org, to learn about all our current online opportunities. For classes, meditation, and projects, we are engaged in to serve the greater San Antonio area. For updates directly in your email, click the envelope icon on our website to sign up for our e-newsletter. Thank you for visiting unityofsa.org. At Unity of San Antonio, we honor the inherent wholeness and wisdom within people of all ages. We are a community inclusive of young people who have a special place in our hearts. Your youth and family ministry are currently homeschooling. This is our blessing for them and for all young people in the world. Please join us. Children and teens, we know who you are. You are the light of God. We love you, we bless you, we celebrate you, and we see you doing great things.
Please welcome our senior minister, Reverend Jimmy Scott. With over 35 years of service in ministry, we are so grateful to Reverend Jimmy for his words of wisdom. All right. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to Unity of San Antonio. This morning, I'm going to begin with uh, just a few moments of meditation and contemplation. So if you're at home or you're safe or somewhere where you're safe and able to sit, I invite you to do so. Sit down and relax. Take an opportunity to close your eyes and shut out the outer world. And we'll enter into a brief few moments of meditation. So one of the things that happens when we enter into the quietness of our own being is the body loses all of its natural tension. And we can literally feel that taking place as we sit and as we relax and as we close our eyes. And as we expend the energy to stop thinking about all of the busyness in our lives, and all the external things that are taking place all around us. So wherever you are, just relax and breathe. Open yourself up to that divine presence that is within. And allow it to remind you to set aside all of the busyness and all of the activities you've got planned for today. And claim this time for yourself. It's time to relax, to let go, and to feel at one with everything in the universe. Quieting the mind, and relaxing the body. Just hold that space. And then take another deep breath. Feel it as it is released from the body. And then open your eyes and give thanks. So this morning, my topic is living with uncertainty. One of the psychic reasons much of humanity is so troubled by is the fact that we feel as if we have no control. In our current times, there's a massive amount of uncertainty that we have to be able to navigate with daily uh, practice with all that is going on in our world, all of our perceived normalcy, normalcy practices have been upended, and our beliefs are daily challenged by behaviors that we are not accustomed to being exposed to, or that we once upon a time could ignore. We could ignore them because usually when they happen, they usually happened on such a minute scale 
that we didn't have to be overly concerned about them. But today, everything seems to be clamoring for our attention. In life, today, everything is noteworthy. In one of her books, I think it was Mastering Trust, Renee Brown made the following statement. She said, and I quote, I spent a lot of years trying to outrun and or outsmart vulnerability in my life. And I did that by trying to make things certain, definite, black and white, good or bad. My inability to lean into the discomfort of vulnerability limited the fullness of those important experiences that are wrought with uncertainty. Experiences like love, belonging, trust, joy, and even creativity, to name a few. Close quote. So living with uncertainty, because we are such creatures of habit, it's important for us to monitor our habits and to make sure that we separate the good habits from the not so good habits in our lives. There was an interesting story that I'm reminded of this morning about a guru in India who went to his ashram every day and he always brought his dog along with him and he'd tie the dog to a hitch outside the ashram, and then the guru would go in and they would conduct their services. So his disciples, they watched this practice and then they began to assume that way they were actually a part of the ritual. So somewhere along the way, as they're going through this process, the guru dies. And their disciples were troubled because they did not know if they could continue on practicing their spirituality. So finally, they came to a conclusion that they would just go and get the guru's dog and to bring him in each day and they all took turns picking up the guru's dog, bringing him in, hitching him up outside, and then they went inside and continued conducting their services. But then the dog died, and the disciples decided in order for them to continue to meet, they had to find another dog. So if no one brought a dog, they decided amongst themselves they could not conduct any meetings. And then the story ends with them in this dilemma. And for me, the story points to a number of realities. The first reality is what we might call learned assumptive behavior. Because the guru brought his dog with him, the students assumed it had some kind of spiritual value. The second reality is no one ever asked the guru why he brought the dog in. They never asked the question because the guru was deemed to be so important they didn't want to bother him by asking a simple question. And all the while, the reality was that the guru simply brought his dog with him because he didn't want to leave the dog at home alone. And it's an amazing story about assumptions. One point of emphasis here is spiritual independence. How do we get spiritual independence and not depend on external sources 
for our spirituality. In order to have spiritual independence, we have to trust. We have to trust the spirit within us. There's a portion of the Gospel of John, 14th chapter and the 12th, 12th verse, where Jesus makes this simple but also very complex statement. He says, and I quote, truly, truly, I say to you, he or she who believes in me believes in the works that I do the, or the teachings that I teach, who believes in me to do the kind of spiritual work that I do or because of the kind of spiritual work that I do. The same you shall do. The results I have generated, you are capable of generating. And you'd think that that's just a simple assumption that we would make. If someone else has done something, then why can't we? But there are many times in our lives when we are confronted with opportunities to do something that we've never done before or felt ourselves incapable of doing, that we turn our backs and walk away. We don't have a dog to tie to the hitching post. Jesus also said, I will not be with you forever. And that's why I teach you these things. My time on this plane is limited, he was saying. There's also a quote where Socrates once told his students who were bemoaning the fact that he wouldn't be around with them forever. He simply said for them to follow the true disciple, which is within themselves. The true disciple is one who adds to the teachings that he or she has learned. Nietzsche put it in another way. He said, the disciple who remains a disciple, a follower, badly repays the teacher. In other words, that disciple wastes the teacher's time because he or she is not learning to apply the teachings in his or her own life. So in today's terms, if the disciple isn't growing or developing autonomy or is not progressing in their lives, they are wasting everyone's time, everyone's talent, everyone's efforts and energy. And no one is better off when that happens because we live in a world in which we have to depend upon one another. That dependence is not something that is written in stone, but it is something that is implied because we are all here at this point in time together for a reason. And many times we don't know specifically what that reason is. We know, we may know about certain personal aspects of the reason, but they are revealed to us daily. They come to us through insight and through different experiences that we experience every day. In the scriptures, there are many references to being at one with God, being one with all creation. And what those scriptures are telling us is that unification is very important for us. Unity is very important for us. I remember reading something by the French priest Teilhard de Chardin, and he called it an omega point. It's a point in time when the light of our consciousness would blaze across the planet. And he wasn't talking about time as we measure time. He's talking about universal time. 
and about how when we use the time that we are in and understand and have faith that our hopes and our dreams are based on a reality that sometimes is not easily discernible to us in our current moments. But because they are not easily discernible does not negate their reality. I'm reminded this morning of a moment in time some 40-some years ago when my two children were about five or six years of age. And they, they are just about a little over a year apart, so we had both of them pretty close together. And they were in a room playing in the little cottage that we owned at the time, and I heard our daughter tell her brother that she was going to be a lawyer. Now, at the time, we had, if I remember correctly, something like a $12,000 mortgage on this little tiny cottage that we had purchased. And both Mary and I were struggling to keep our little mortgage covered and to keep our children fed and clothed and be able to provide for them all that they needed in order to grow and to unfold. And I can't remember how many times after her first declaration that she would make that statement, I'm going to be a lawyer. And sometimes when she'd make the statement, I'd shudder because I could not logically perceive of the possibility of her becoming a lawyer. We didn't have the means, the money, the resources. None of those things could I see. Sixteen or 17, 18 years later, the dream that she held became her reality. And there's a deep point here. Time and space are not as absolute as everyday experience leads us to believe. I spoke last week about the seeds of consciousness and how those seeds germinate and they don't only germinate, there is no end to the possibilities that reside in those seeds. They hold incredible things for us that oftentimes we cannot see or imagine in our human consciousness. I've always considered myself to be an incurably optimistic person. And it's still a challenge for me to accept that reality, that those seeds have incredible possibilities if we are willing to wait and to allow them to germinate in their own time frame. I believe that's true of every one of us. There are times in our lives when we know, and then even when we know, we think that we don't know. And maybe that's our safety mechanism. Maybe that's how we stay grounded in the, the uncertainty of our now moments. Here are some interesting words from the revelationist, John. They pop into my mind quite frequently. He says, behold, I have made all things new. Time reveals the possibilities of that revelation. Things are always made new. Charles Fillmore often stated that time 
has no power over one who dwells in the mind of God. That's where we must dwell in times of uncertainty and times of certainty. For each one of us, that may have a different meaning. But it's perfectly well and reasonable that we be able to apply our own meaning because that's how we are created, in, made in and after the image of God. So this week, as you're watching the news and as you're digesting all the amazing happenings that are taking place and seeing all of the negativity and all of the positivity, uh, positivity, just relax and know within your heart that all is well. Peace and blessings, dear friend. Thank you for tuning in this morning. Thank you for your support. And I will see you again next week. Your giving is especially important during this time. We invite you to participate in the flow of abundant living through your generosity to our spiritual community of contributing. Please go to unityofsa.org, click the green donate to donate online or mail a check to Unity of San Antonio, 8103 Broadway, Suite 210, San Antonio, Texas, 78209. Please join us in our prosperity blessing. Divine love as our community blesses and multiplies all that we have, all that we are, all we give, and all we receive. Amen.
It doesn't matter what tomorrow brings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got an attitude. I've got an attitude. I've got an attitude of gratitude. I've got an attitude. I've got an attitude. I've got an attitude of gratitude. Thank you for joining us. We love you and can't wait to see you again soon. Hugs. Join us today for Sunday Social Hour at 1230 and connect with your community online. Grab a snack and a cup of coffee or tea and join us for some great conversation, heartfelt support, and lots of laughs. We look forward to seeing you then. In closing our service, please join us in our community blessing and prayer for protection, followed by It's a Brand New Day. Beloved friends, I see your divine light. I see your open heart. I see your life transforming. I celebrate your divine identity as you radiate your light in the world. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new day. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. And celebrate. The power of love has rolled that stone away. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. It's a brand new day. 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 Clap your hands. Clap your hands. And celebrate. The power of love has rolled that stone away. Faith can move a mountain, part that stormy sea. Love can be a fountain, pouring over me. Hope can build a future, so we can truly say the past is past, free at last. It's a brand new day. 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 Clap your hands. Clap your hands and celebrate. Power of love has rolled that stone away. Hey, 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 hey. It's a brand new day. Doubts become believing that death can be destroyed. Painful loss and grieving can open us to joy. The dawn of resurrection can chase our fears away. The past is past, free at last. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new day. It's a brand new day. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. And celebrate. The power of love has rolled that stone away. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. It's a brand new day. 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 Clap your hands. Clap your hands. And celebrate. Beautiful lights, thank you for your presence, your support, and your love. Have a blessed week.